This is the Zoos ZAC or ZAC 93, a GPIO Z Wave controller for your Home Assistant Yellow or your Raspberry Pi. Here are the specs. The Z Wave controller is about 23 bucks on Amazon right now. It's got the Z Wave 800 series chip with long range and S2 security. So if you'll notice it has GPIO ports there on the bottom of the board, those will plug into the Home Assistant Yellow. So go ahead and take the lid off of your Home Assistant Yellow or your Raspberry Pi and make sure you line up the holes on the back of the ZAC 93 with the pins on the Home Assistant Yellow. The Home Assistant Yellow has GPIO pins that match the top 10 headers of a Raspberry Pi. Here's the Raspberry Pi pinout if you need a reference. So take the ZAC 93, turn it over and Put it gently on the pins first to get it squared away and then push it on with your finger. It might hurt a little bit, but once you can't push down any further, that's how you know it's in. Okay, so now that we've installed the ZAC-93 on our Home Assistant Yaw, let's go ahead and get it configured uh, with the software. So I'm here on my main Home Assistant. Uh, we can go to Settings and we go to Add-ons. So we click Add-ons and we won't have any, so we can go to the Add-on Store down here. There's a whole bunch here, but what we want to type is Z-Wave.js UI, like that, Z-Wave.js UI. Click this community add-on here. Shout out to Frank for making this one. And um, if you want to support more of his work, you can do it over on Patreon. But what we want to do is we want to go up here to install. Okay, so after it installs, you'll be greeted with a couple different options here. Start on boot should be enabled. If it's not, make sure you enable it. We always want this to run on startup. There's this watchdog option, which restarts the add-on if it crashes for some reason. I always have this one enabled. This last one is show in the sidebar. When we enable this, it shows an option over here that we can access it with. So make sure all these are enabled and then click start. Okay, so it is running successfully. You can see the add-on CPU and RAM usage here. Generally, you don't need to care about these, so you can ignore both these statistics and the host name. So we can go over here and click on Z-Wave.js. Even though it's anonymous, I generally never send data anywhere for any reason as much as possible. So I'm gonna click no. If you wanna support the project, then you can click okay. It also pops up with this change log box. This will appear after every extension, or I should say every add-on update. You can just click the disable change logs box down here at the bottom and click okay. Okay, and this is the main page of the Z-Wave.js UI add-on. There's nothing here. Uh, we need to configure a few things first. So let's go over to the settings gear and go straight to the Z-Wave tab first. So the first thing we need to do is change the serial port. So the ZAC-93 communicates with Home Assistant on a serial port and uh, serial devices usually default to zero if they're the only ones on the system like mine is. So we can choose AMA zero. There are these security keys. These are basically the passwords that our controller, our ZAC-93, will use to communicate with other Z-Wave devices. We're just gonna click generate and have it automatically create all of these different options. Uh, there's two different sets. There's, you know, kind of regular, your regular vanilla security keys, and then there's your security keys for the long range devices. Uh, they're separate. The quick and dirty version of S0 versus S2, if you notice, all these say S2 except for this one. S0 was the original Z-Wave encryption method. It was just one key shared with all the devices and was easily broken after like a few months. So they improved it and created S2. If you're interested in like the more nitty gritty details of how Z-Wave authentication works, let me know in the comments and uh, maybe I'll put another video out there or something. Your device by default will have RF frequencies already set on it. So wherever you bought it from, it will already have those for your region. If you needed to specifically set it here, you could, but generally you want to leave this alone. There's different frequencies based on where you are in the world. So pay attention to that. Uh, the rest of this, you can pretty much ignore uh, you won't need any of this. We can go ahead and click save. So once you click save, there's one more thing down here at the bottom. Um, if you expand, actually let's close this tab like that. If you expand this home assistant tab down here, make sure the WS server is enabled and that it's on port 3000. Uh, you can leave this box empty uh, as long as DNS discovery is checked. We go back to the main page. Hey, hey, look at that. Our controller shows up. Now there's one more thing that you need to do to avoid some serious issues. And if we expand this, it will even show you the warning. So they say upgrade 
ASAP. And so that's what we're going to do now. We can expand this drop down and go over here to the advanced. What we want to do is do this firmware update over the wire. We're going to click update and it will give the scary warning that says we're not responsible if you break it. But that's fine because we know what we're doing. We need to update the firmware via file. There's no like automatic updates for, for controllers for this sort of thing. So to get this firmware, we're going to go to Zeus's support site. You can click on Zeus OTA firmware files. We're just going to search for Zach 93 firmware 150 based on 722.1, which is higher than 120.7.19.3. So we're a little, little ways behind. So let's go ahead and get this downloaded. It's just a typical zip file so we can go ahead and extract it and inside the zip will be a single file the zac 93 blah 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 dot gbl we'll click this box it'll open up this window we go to wherever we downloaded it and we then upload the gbl file i'll say upload we click update and it sits there and updates the controller firmware says the status was okay. All right, so we'll close out of here and we'll close out of here. We'll check the firmware versions over here. Hey, 7221 and 150. So we successfully updated the firmware on our ZAC 93. Let's see what it looks like when we add a device. So if we close this, we can go over here to the hamburger menu again and click manage nodes. Brings up this nodes manager. We can click uh, inclusion. Now it will automatically assign a name or you can give it a specific name. So this device, for example, is a door and window sensor. Let's say you had a bedroom and you wanted the door sensor on it, maybe to send a signal when your kids try to get out in the middle of the night or if the dog's opening it or something. So, so we can type what we want the name of the device to be. Uh, we'll just type guest bedroom uh, door, something like that. This will set the name in both ZWave.js and inside Home Assistant. So Make sure it's something human readable or something that you'll understand what it does. Because as your network grows, it will be more difficult to keep track unless you have good names. So make sure that uh, it's something reasonable. Now, location, you can you can add a location here, but this only gets stored in ZWave.js. This doesn't get brought over to Home Assistant like the name does. So I usually leave these blank, so we can click next. So generally, I use the default option here with force security checked for most things and click next. And now inclusion mode will have started. So go to your device. Uh, for example, I've got this door sensor here. Mine does a triple tap on a little button on the back and it will then add it to the network. So I'm going to triple tap that button and that will allow the controller and our device to talk to each other and acknowledge their existence. And then our door sensor will be added to the Z-Wave network. Okay, the last piece of the puzzle, now that we've added a door sensor or some other device to our controller, let's see how we can actually view it and use it in Home Assistant. So if we go over here to settings and we go, now we go over here to devices and services and we look at the integrations, there should be something that pops up for Z-Wave. You can click add. It'll say, do you want to add the Z-Wave server discovered? Just click submit and it will show up. Go ahead and click finish. It'll show up over here with two devices, which will show our controller and then our guest bedroom door. We can click on that, click on the guest bedroom door. I could take the door sensor and I can open the door sensor by separating the pieces and then putting them back together. It detects when it's open and when it's closed. And you can see here on the logs that the state is changing from open to closed. And that's how we know that our controller is working. In my opinion, the ZAC 93 is a good value. It's compatible with Home Assistant. It has the Z-Wave 800 series chip and it was easy to install and get set up. If you're looking for more on the Home Assistant Yellow on how to get it set up and troubleshoot it, check out this playlist and I'll see you in the next one.